guy. The the message self destructs. Nothing. <laughs> you can you can use Riverside to do like live broadcasts, and yeah. but, like that what. To, who wants to well no okay no i'm not going to go on that diatribe anyway <laughs> good stuff. oh i have one favor to ask can i maybe not be the very first person to pitch because i am still writing oh, for... <laughs> <laughs> well i'm letting mikey I... pick who's the first pitch as okay the guest, all right. anyway do it mikey, well, I'll mikey just... might want to go first you might want to go last I'll I'll, I'll, leave it I'll, there. I'll just i'll smash it out during the review discussion then that's on, fine do it. oh right okay Everyone ready? Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Lovely. Don't need claps or anything, Mr. Toneby, today, no? No, nope. all amazing. good. Hello, and welcome to episode 70 of Sequel Pitch, the movie 70. podcast where four friends pitch sequel ideas to movies that don't have them before battling it out to prove that their sequel's the best. Fresh off a completely deserved and not at all charitable win, I am Matt Rushton, and I'm your host this week, and joining me as ever, first up, he's the cigar-chewing, shirt-removing, mustachioed madman that you want in your side in a bar brawl, it's Ross Harmston. All right, all right, all right, see, you see, yeah. what you gotta do is you gotta kill those, you gotta kill those dragons now, now, well, watch out now, you just gotta kill those dragons, man. <laughs> I knew you were the pick for that one. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, we have a rugged, unkept god of a man who has vengeance on the brain. It's Mr. Andy Henry. <laughs> oh, no, well, I, can do, I, I can't do a Christian Bale impression. Uh, well, we'll move do, swiftly do the... on. Oh, <laughs> Batman! Damn those dragons! Damn them! Sound like fucking <laughs> Richard Nixon. <laughs> Both dragons are crooks. <laughs> and last of all, he's a big, gorgeous, fire breathing lizard and a badass sat atop his castle. It's Drew Toynbee. Um. <laughs> they don't sound like that. In the, I'm not going to do a, like a full roar. I'm not doing that. Just do a little. Sorry, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. For our listeners, he is alive. <laughs> Ross didn't shoot him last episode, so that's a great. <laughs> now we've had our regular intros, and those beady eared amongst you may have heard another voice in our midst today. Uh, I'm so excited to say that this week we are joined by movie review royalty. He is an incredibly successful YouTuber with over 300,000 subscribers. He was part of the creative team for Gearbox writing one of the best video game series around. He just happens to be the voice of Scooter in the Borderlands game, and yeah. his YouTube series has been nominated for an Emmy. Yay! A huge yeah. freaking hey. welcome to Mikey Newman. Hey. Hey. Hello. 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 Thank you I am also here. so much <laughs> for joining us, man. We are not I, Everyone worthy. else got cool, like, fire-breathing introductions, <laughs> and I just got, like, a resume. <laughs> uh, yeah, gosh, well, what can we... I mean, who can we make you? There, yeah. there is a very, very cool individual here uh, that is... Who looks just like Matthew McConaughey in Red <laughs> Fire. It's shocking how big these muscles are. Treating us My to goodness. the shirt off as well. And yeah. goddamn, I'm holding myself back. And it's a good thing it's a monitor, not in person. <laughs> but how are you, Mike? And thank you so much for joining us. I'm good. I got to watch Rain of Fire this morning, so everything is good. Amazing. Oh, sorry. Was that a spoiler? No. Uh, unnamed Matthew McConaughey. <laughs> if it's not been given away and our title hasn't given it away in the in the, in the description, it doesn't matter. It's just taking a slight shine off me. <laughs> but anyway, for anyone who doesn't know, perhaps you could give us a quick overview of your channel, uh, just so they understand a bit why we're all sat here fanboying over you. <laughs> Uh, I run a, a channel with my partner, Tara. It is called Film Joy. Uh, it's Movies and Mikey, Deep Dive, and some other stuff. Uh, we try to look at film criticism and art, not necessarily from a positive perspective, although that is how a lot of people choose to look at it. I just want to talk about what I like as opposed to here is a list of what we hate. Um <laughs> Because I don't know if anyone's noticed that YouTube is kind of just lists of things people hate at this point. Mm. <laughs> um, yeah. And since my 
I hate NFTs channel didn't take off. <laughs> um, I was re- I was really hoping. So it's not cool to hate NFTs anymore. Oh, <laughs> well, is what I'm hearing. Dan, Dan Olson kind well, of no one knows sucked all the air out of the it's, room as well. Yeah, I all you guys with your huge NFT uh, investments. Uh, absolutely. Are your, not. are your board apes not doing it for you? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think I I, if you ask me to it. name another NFT, I could down here. So, am I an NFT? No. Can I can I make myself an NFT? I I think can you I like could. sell I myself then. <laughs> I'll only if you delete the original copy. <laughs> <laughs> so, that's to ponder. That's, how, that's why oh, I, hold on. the world is crumbling said... around me. I can't take that. Hold on. <laughs> Keep wow. them away from the red wine tonight, contemplating that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Amazing stuff. Well, now that we have composed ourselves slightly, and <laughs> we will differ just slightly away from NFTs for now uh, and get back on track with <laughs> this week's movie, the 2002 dragon fighting fantasy, as you've heard, Reign of Fire. So, mm-hmm. as always, if you want to watch the film first, we'll just sit right here and be awkward for a few seconds. La, la, la. Oh, this is my favorite part. <laughs> <laughs> it's, Amazing. Oh, you turned this right in. Like, Amazing. It's the credit. It's the, bit <laughs> where he, <laughs> it's the bit where he shouts at the little girl and he's trying to save her from the fire and he's like, let go, love her. Let go! Let go, just, let I love go. it. <laughs> I, just, I love those serif fonts. I need more serifs in my life. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm glad you joined us for that. That was uh, we should do watch alongs more often. I think um, <laughs> if you've already forgotten what happened, some might say they don't blame you, Andy. Uh, if you can't be bothered to watch the movie, I'm going to throw you our typical 60-ish second summary. I've been timing this one, and I've managed to get it to 62 seconds at my fastest. Oh, but that'll then do. I cut yeah. one line. We'll just skip so two words. Yeah. Hopefully, <laughs> yeah. Right. I'm going to kick it off uh, right about. Now, Kid Quinn is in a mine with Mummy. He disturbs something and flees as fire engulfs the mine. Quinn comes out to eye with the dragon and somehow manages to kill his mum, and they all escape. Jump forward 20 years, the world's burning. We learn how the world fell, and we see Christian Bale's adult Quinn in a safe haven. The haven's crops are burned when the dragon tries to kill some people, and shortly after that, Van Zandt, played by Matthew McConaughey, rolls up in a tank with some crazy US forces. There's lots of disagreements, friction, and a big fight after McConaughey brings to brings the dragon to the haven, and Quinn's best mate, Gerald Butler, dies in an inferno. There's a romance with Quinn and Alex Jensen, who's Van, da- Van Zandt's helicopter pilot, and people jump out of helicopters and shoot next at dragons. Loads of them die. Their average lifespan's like 80 seconds. In the end, though, Quinn is convinced by Van Zandt and Alex to go kill the dragon using the golden during the golden hour and that's not to be confused with golden shower they succeed by shooting a crossbow bolt with what must be a nuke head into its mouth but not before van zan jumps off an 80 foot tower shirtless with a fireman's axe only to be plucked out the sky with ease and chomps mcconaughey signing off in style the movie closes with quinn and alex setting up a radio tower receiving a transmission from france and lightheartedly acknowledging how there's been no dragon sighting since well there we go to change it mm. I think you came in about 70 seconds. Oh, I, I, blamed yeah. the, I blamed the stumbling. I got too excited. I just got way <laughs> yeah. too excited doing that one. Can, can we go back to the part? Because you identified something that me and Tara definitely identified, which is his mother just dies. Yeah. <laughs> and like, yeah. nothing Don't happens. Don't really know how or why. Yeah. I think it's just, yeah, I think it's she's just like, calm. oh, be careful. She, she died of by. shock. Of, I sure. know which, of yeah. elevator poison. I think on the <laughs> <is> <laughs> crushed, but I was like, I don't like it. it. Looks like he's kind of maybe it's right, methane yeah. poisoning from like you know the the dragon's breath. Maybe I don't know. Uh, <laughs> actually, it looks like the uh, the fire's made from liquid fired from glands, not gas. So you're an <laughs> idiot. <laughs> <laughs> was Fuck anyone you. else sad at the end when he found the old elevator mm. where oh, the mum wasn't mom there? Died? There wasn't a skeleton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Call CinemaSin. Get him out of the fire. for it. It was like, ooh, lunch. <laughs> no, they, <laughs> they, they had to eat the bottom. They had, they had, they had long enough 
like there, there, there's long enough for there to be Time magazine articles with photos of Manhattan oh burning. Surely he, he well got to bury his sell? mum. No. <laughs> I, I, no, fuck. I, this is six months after 9-11, so absolutely every single magazine in America was fully aware of what this looked like. <laughs> Because <laughs> this is like literally the summer after. God. Yeah, someone <laughs> signed off on that. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Yeah, shit. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, sorry. Too soon for 9 11. <laughs> <laughs> My bad. Well, no, but it, sorry, was, it was in summer 2002, maybe. Yeah. Yeah. I just so, like that. I like yeah. that. I like the time, that magazine. How, how, how many copies of that time magazine do you think they sold? Was Every that, single one. Was that cover, and you're like, yeah, we know. We don't need to read an article about it. Like The macabre sells so well on the black market. Like You, you get a copy of that framed, <laughs> and like a first edition of that magazine framed. framed. Yeah. Yeah, that's going to sell for thousands. Fucking the currency. The they don't, they the don't currency, address yeah. the currency in this movie, but it's actually all just like limited edition Time magazines <laughs> with that cover. I, all right. I took a just... <laughs> Yeah, tomatoes are the 2020 <laughs> currency yeah. in this universe. I'll give you three tomatoes, come on! I feel like <laughs> tomatoes weren't far off the 2020 currency of our world either. Yeah, well, really yeah, certainly, <laughs> certainly, if you live in the UK right yeah, now. Yeah, I at the beginning of the movie when they're like March 2020, I'm like, come on, guys. <laughs> <laughs> this is all too on the nose. The Simpsons on us <laughs> predicted the future. <laughs> Uh, anyway. Well, there you go. For, we'll carry on just diving into this anyway. For regular listeners, you know the drill. We uh, and for new listeners, welcome. We will kind of each take our turn to give top level thoughts on the movie, along with the score, before then properly diving into our pictures. As always, if you want to hear the full review, head on over to our patreon.com forward slash sequel pitch, where you'll get to hear the full review, including Mikey's incredible thoughts and <laughs> entertaining value. Um, no, so, no pressure. Uh, Drew, as we said, you were very excited for us to do this movie. So what are your overriding thoughts and give us a score at the end of it? This movie occupies a similar place in my heart as Dog Soldiers. It was it was it's a movie that I encountered through my brother and all of his army cadet friends that they enjoyed because it was so fucking cool and there were dragons and castles and axes and Matthew McConaughey and tanks and all of these like 17 year old soon to be actually genuine soldiers just loved it for that reason and I being the sort of soft sensitive nerdy one was like oh but they they they're acting out Star Wars for the kids and look <laughs> at how they're they're thinking about how culture would survive and 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 Quinn's got to learn to be a leader and and there are cool dragons um and it's it's I I I really really love this movie it's not without its um well, plot holes perhaps and we can get into Don't that say that word out <laughs> <Hang up this laughs> <one. laughs> <laughs> plot plot burn scorch marks yeah but i love that it is uh it, it's a word that i that keeps coming up and uh, uh for me with films at the moment it's really earnest it's like it takes its premise really seriously it's just like right okay yeah this is a high concept post-apocalypse dragon movie we're gonna throw in some arthurian imagery and not really make as much of that as they maybe could have frankly i felt like they were a little bit restrained on the sort of knights fighting dragons imagery i think they could have gone a bit harder but great creature design great effects good characters involving story and it wraps up really nicely uh with an ending that doesn't need a sequel and so i thought it would be a (laughs) a great choice for for our podcast and i'm gonna give it 4.5 4.5 inhuman gu- guttural like grunts of rage from Matthew McConaughey while he's beating the piss out of uh, Christian Bale. Is that 4.5 out of 5? Yes, out, out of 5. 5 out of oh yeah, sorry, we didn't say. I was going to say, you are stingy. <laughs> <laughs> I love this movie. We are, we are cynical yeah. here in Britain. <laughs> 
I mean, let's talk. So that's a high 4.5. Speaking of cynical, we know exactly where we're going next. Get a drink down you quickly. No, don't do that. <laughs> don't introduce me that way. <laughs> <laughs> Prove Sorry, him wrong. What did Prove you him say? wrong, Andy. What did you say in our preamble? You are, you talk real talk, are you? I, 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 I tell the truth about movies. Go on, then. That, that's all it is. The definitive objective, the, Andy, the is the arbiter truth. of all truth. Yes. <laughs> I am here. You're welcome. This movie Go is, for it, is Andy. this movie's good. It, it's it's good. It's fine. It's enjoyable. I'm going to give it three point five. <laughs> That's it. Nothing else. Oh my god! Great. Right, That's so that is his top line about the thought, movie. So. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. Okay. Three three point okay, five well. uh, hip flasks that aren't actually alcohol. They're water, which was which was quite funny. <laughs> <laughs> awesome uh ross i'll come to you and we'll save the best to last perhaps i'm conflicted because on the one hand i was like oh this is this is no oh, this is boring <laughs> and it's got fucking dragons in it but then i'm also like actually it's all right and then uh, then the next minute i'm like actually no it's all brown <laughs> everything's brown <laughs> brown <laughs> Brown. It's 2002. <laughs> Video games, movies, <laughs> television, it's all yeah, brown. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's dark, dingy. The performances are really good. Like, I thought Matthew McConaughey and uh, even though he's got the worst tattoo in the world <laughs> and Christian Bale are really good. I'm not sure on their leadership style. Christian Bale, he's like, you're not fucking going out there. All right, yeah. you can go out there now and then just fucking go, go on, get those fucking smart. All right, we'll go fucking save you. Um, <laughs> and yeah, like in terms of like, like when it came out, like Drew said, the like the creature effects and stuff and the visual effects for I'm, I'm assuming it wasn't like a massively high budget movie. Um, 60 million, 60 million, yeah, so like it's around the uh, comedy, I think, stage, yeah, so budget. like because it was a Rob Bowman movie, yes, yes. So yeah, yeah. He's TV. He did X Files, and then he went into he yeah. Directed well, because Chris movie. Carter is still around in this movie too, because yeah. he had just finished the original run of the X Files. I think. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. So like, uh, but yeah, mostly th- this guy's been working in TV for mm. a while. And for like, for like sixty million, like they've done a good job with the visual effects and stuff. Um, and and yeah, like it sort of plods along and it ends, and you're like, oh, okay. Um, and yeah, so I'm gonna give it two point seven. No, two point two point nine out of being torn out. kids walking around a a sort of area that is being built without a hard hat and no one saying anything <laughs> whatsoever. That's the um, least of their problems. Safe. If you got your hard hat on, <laughs> get in there. Get I hat. mean, his mom was joking with him about drinking and smoking. Yeah, this is true. Yeah. Yeah. So, wow. he's, he's, he's odd. odd. He's, he's odd. odd. He's odd. You've been fucking Landed. smoking, you can Get right. <laughs> Only when I drink, you dick. <laughs> yeah. I, is this the prequel to Treasure Planet that I just <laughs> put together? Because like now, now it makes sense. Yeah, it does. Uh, uh, I'll be, I'll ruin it and tell you that it's not unfortunately the prequel, so it might make less sense for you, Mikey. But what are, you, what are your thoughts? Or what's your score for the movie? I don't want to give this movie a four point five, if not. Most of all, because Rob's follow-up to this film was Electra, <laughs> which was the last time he directed a movie. Yeah, I think it's all TV from there. <laughs> a lot of working with Nathan Fillion, which I think is really fun. Yeah, um, I am going to give this a three point eight because I think a four is too high and a three point five is too low, and it's it's pretty cool. I think. Matthew McConaughey as a uh, grizzled tough muffin. I don't remember his <laughs> name. Yeah. Um, grizzled Zana. tough muffin. That was going to be my porn <laughs> yeah. star name. He's, he's a major and he's like lining up all his weaponry in columns <laughs> so that dragons can just fly <laughs> by and destroy them. Like, dude, you fight dragons for a living. <laughs> 
And then you just attacked one with an axe. I think he had some undiagnosed <laughs> struggles in his life. <laughs> and that's why a 3.8. <laughs> oh, yeah. Amazing. Gosh, how do you top that? So, yeah, I for me, it's, it's one of those films that I've... When, when it's we great, but it's it terrible. Out, yeah, it's yeah. Like I was so excited when we were like, yeah, yeah, let's do Rain of Fire. I was like, yes, fucking let's do Rain of Fire. I watched it. I was like, oh yeah, yeah, this is it. It gives me, <laughs> it gives me warm fuzzy feelings. But I'm also like, it's it's, no, it's not the perfect film, but um, I feel like. <laughs> On that, I, it's I'm, better than Electra. It is better, it is than, better Electra. than Electra. And on that basis, it can't be a, <laughs> lower than a 0.1, which would be Electra. Um, no, <laughs> it'd be, I'm going to give this, I'm going to stick it straight down the line and just be a four undiagnosed uh, mental ailments out of five. <laughs> because I love that concept. They definitely... He was constantly lying to everyone. Yeah. He was a bad leader. At the end of the movie, when he looks... Christian Bale straight in the face. He says, "You're the leader now. You're doing it." And then he never allows him to lead <laughs> anyone. He issues every order <laughs> up until the end. I I don't know. I don't trust him. I don't trust Gruff Tough Muppet. <laughs> I don't remember what it is. Wise. Unfortunately, Gruff Tough Muppet won't be appearing in the sequel. I don't think. Which now makes me quite sad. Or will he? <laughs> so with that the scores are in. who knows man i have heard some weird shit in these if 70 no one, episodes so <laughs> if no one put gruff tough muffin in there because i didn't put it in mine and now i feel bad <laughs> we all we all get a free pass to add a character named gruff tough muffin <laughs> yeah uff don't spell it <laughs> tough <laughs> Rough. <laughs> right, and Rough tough, tough. Yeah. So we've got a bumper score this time, which should make a very interesting uh, average. Drew, have you been our scores on the doors? Actually, adding Mikey's on in the additional column brings it out at 3.74, and yeah. us for just us is 3.73. So Mikey pulling up the average by 0.1. There we um, go. <laughs> so yeah, three point seven three. Our closest analog being this is going to make soldiers. Sad now. This is good listening. <laughs> Star Trek Beyond three point seven five. Uh, where's dog yeah, soldiers? Dog soldiers. Yeah, that's a good. Dog one. soldiers. Where's dog soldiers? Oh my god! I think Rain of Fire is better than Star Trek Beyond. Like, how do we resolve this? <laughs> fighting? <laughs> Just keep yeah. adding more points to yeah. your score, man. Yeah. Um, is Star Trek Beyond right, better than so... Electra? That's the question. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> yes. For 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 the dog soldiers comparison, dog soldiers came away with four point zero six. So okay. it, it's I feel, a, like Ross, I feel like Ross was the one who put the nail in the coffin for that score in. with <laughs> yeah, with an cool. Andy Henry level score there. I yeah, mean, Andy cool. didn't even give anything and gave it three and a half. So <laughs> there you go. <laughs> well, the scores are in, and therefore that means there is only one thing left to do. Everybody, it's time to get. Sequels pitched. Now then, we have got a treat for you this week, everybody. We have got four pitches. That's it. Mikey has what? amazingly even come equipped to the pitch this week, and we're throwing him in there. He, he's going up against these three. We call them vets, but the work that Mikey's done in the past, I think he's got his own. Uh, <laughs> he's got his own credentials too. <laughs> so therefore, I'm going to be judge, jury, and executioner today, and. Yeah, I'll be determining fourth, third, second, and first place. Uh, for the listeners at home and for you, Mikey, as always, I'll give each of you the chance to pitch. I'll ask you a couple of questions at the end of your pitch. Uh, after all four of you pitched, yeah, the gloves come off. It's the debate phase. And you guys will try and destroy each other's pitches and tell me why you're the best. Uh, and when it looks like it's going to turn to bloodshed or we all get tired, from all the energy you've thrown out there, I'll come to a conclusion and decide my winning order. Um, but what I'm not going to decide is who goes first. I'm going to give that to you, Mikey. Who do you Damn want it. to hear <laughs> first? Oh, oh uh, I'm going to go with Ross. I like Ooh. your energy. All righty. Okay, this is one of the best sequels. Um, <laughs> it is called Sounds Rise of Fire. Uh, so I did that. Yeah. Yeah. 
Quinn, now leader of a new city, uncovers a plot by a cult to unearth something that has been sleeping for millennia. The mother of all dragons, Atar. (laughs) (laughs) We open the movie and we see Quinn as a young 10-year-old kid. He's in London. Maybe he's smoking or doing some drugs behind the bins or something. Anyway, (laughs) he starts getting bullied, so he tries to beat up the kids, but they are stopped by Quinn's mum. Maybe she gives him a lesson about fighting fire with fire or some shit. Anyway... (laughs) We then see older Quinn wake up. We see him sleeping next to Alex Jensen, because, you know, why not? Oh, and uh, she's pregnant as well. Oh. Anyway, we then see him get dressed, and he walks around this new city. We see the words New London. As it pans through the streets, we get a monologue voiced over by Quinn of basically what happened. Uh, it's 20 years later. They've become better equipped to, to fight off the dragons. They are still about, but there's weaponry is much more significant. Uh, it's significantly better to fight them. Anyway, then Quinn gets word of an approaching cluster of dragons. So insert 20 minute action scene with Quinn <laughs> trying to defeat these dragons. There's cars, <laughs> rooftop bits, and <laughs> Quinn saves some people. Then suddenly one lands and it's, uh, it has a rider on its fucking back. Oh my fuck. <laughs> it says something similar. It says something similar to the like the parcel tongue in uh, Harry Potter. You know, it's. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but Quinn manages to kill the dragon and the rider is crushed, uh, but only conveniently by his waist. And he tells Quinn soon, Atar will rise and you will all be turned to ash. And then he dies. Uh, so Quinn is in two minds about finding out what this means. Alex is like, don't we don't, we have a son. Uh, but Quinn's like, I want my son to grow up in a safe world. So, uh, for some reason because you know safe is killing all the dragons uh so he decides to fuck it and not not his wife uh (laughs) and he puts together a crack team of people his right hand man aaron taylor johnson and some Mm. other generic people as well (laughs) uh they had found a symbol uh they also so they found like on this cult member they found a symbol uh on the outfit that he was wearing And Quinn says he knows someone in old London that may know something about this. So they head to London. On the way, they bed down for the night and come across some new flightless dragons, smaller ones, the size of a car. Insert action scene of them having to kill it. Eventually, they get to old London. Um, And I want to take my time, as I said in my uh, review, that I really want to explore this city and how uh, it's been after its decimation. They head to the British Library or the ruins of it, and then they head underground. Ho- uh, however, uh, circling above, we see a dragon rider. He rides off to inform his cult. Then we go underground, and we follow Quinn. He meets Sir Michael Kane. Yeah, I'm bringing them back together, <laughs> baby. Uh, as the knowledge, and he's known as the knowledge keeper, and he has kept thousands of books and texts from the old world down here safe. Anyway, Quinn learns from Kane that he has seen this symbol before and we get a flashback and he tells him some believe that the original dragon is still dormant beneath the earth, waiting, calling for its release. And that some people know, uh, some people known as the cult of Attar have been working with the dragons to release it, but they work in the shadow. So no one's actually really seen if it's true or not. Uh, anyone. Um, Quinn tells him of his encounter and they deduce that maybe they are ramping up their efforts. Then suddenly cult members burst in with the smaller dragons and then we insert another fucking action scene with its cult destroying the books. And then like they say, that uh, there is no need of knowledge when Attar rises. And then they also kill Michael Caine. They, like, maybe they shank him or something, I don't know. Um, <laughs> insert a chase scene of dragons and stuff which is really cool um but it ends with quinn (laughs) getting knocked out and captured he awakens in a cell we see a cult leader and it's daniel day lewis yeah that's fucking right (laughs) now not more method not more method actors yeah it's fucking daniel day lewis 
He, uh, had... I'm sure that was cheap. <laughs> <laughs> he has a long talk with Quinn about his bad guy plot. Maybe he walks Quinn through the base. Uh, he's, you know, captured and he talks, uh, he shows him this big, huge cavern that they've been excavating. Quinn sees hundreds, Quinn sees hundreds of prisoners um, digging. Anyway, they put him back in his cell, but Aaron, uh, Oh, yeah, but he manages to escape later. Then he has to save Aaron from being killed by maybe some baby dragons as food or something. I don't know. Um, And then they start sneaking around the base. Uh, Maybe they come across a tortured dragon and they release it. It becomes their friend. Um, The last portion of the movie is a big fight. Attar is released like right at the last moment. Um and like it has that moment of like Daniel Day Lewis is looking up at the dragon going, I have released you at our, and then it eats him. Um, so <laughs> Quinn has to save all the d- hundreds of prisoners. Uh, where we learn that all the dragons have a hive mind as well and are connected <laughs> to Attar. Uh, because whenever Attar is hit with something in this fight, in this last section, Quinn's uh, friendly one, like the friendly dragon that he's released feels it. It like whimpers. It goes. <laughs> <laughs> um, we then get an aerial dragon fight. Quinn's dragon is killed and sends Quinn plummeting towards Attar. Quinn pulls out some C4 or something <laughs> and, and a bomb MacGuffin or something. And then Attar opens up uh, and, and like, as he's falling, Attar eats him but like swallows him whole. Um, and then we get just before he's swallowed, we get another flashback of him as a kid. Maybe his mum saying to me, it's to him, the bigger they are, the harder they fall. Uh, and then the bomb goes off inside Attar, uh, <laughs> and is killed <laughs> from the inside. And then the rest of the dragons fall dead. Um, uh, from the sky, and they did it, uh, and that's the end of the movie. Wow, amazing! Wait, were our pitches supposed to be that detailed? Because I <laughs> no. did not. <laughs> Ross Should went I all like, quickly out on that? Yeah. 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 You, you are. He's you're you're welcome to. <laughs> I wrote mine ages ago, so don't worry. Don't worry. Yeah, mm. I, I had, I, I. I, I had another mental health crisis, so this episode was delayed, and everyone else had their had their pitches done like a week and a half ago, and I'm still doing mine now. Woo-hoo! <laughs> so yeah, it's all good. It's great work, Ross. Thank you very much for that. Um, <laughs> my first one is just like just so that I can clear up the time frame in my head. We're 20 years later. Yeah, and there's still Alex dragons. Is pregnant. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So Why? It's quite a geriatric pregnancy. Yeah. No, How she's she like be? what? She's like thirty in the. She can't be Matt more than thirty years old. Oh, geriatric is fifty years old apparently to Matt. Well, no, I mean <laughs> Matt, Matt's <laughs> using his parenting experience to sort of get you on a technicality there, Ross. Because like technically, you're a geriatric mother in the UK health system if you're over thirty. <laughs> so. This is this is, okay, this so is a fantasy movie, yeah? <laughs> fantasy. I'm, I'm cool with it. I'm not criticizing it. I was just checking that. No, we, fantasy. I was just getting my timelines correct. Yeah, yeah, so, okay. So it's pregnant. You mentioned a son. Do they already have a child? No, no, no. So is this no, like, they're like, oh, we have we have our unborn son is what she was cool. mentioning. I yeah, get yeah. you. Yeah. Good stuff. Um, My other question. Yeah, I've only got one more question for now. Um, Means I've won. My other one with regards to the cult yes do we learn more about kind of like the founding of the cult and maybe in another movie in a prequel friend <laughs> uh, okay uh, maybe in a prequel the I'll, rise I'll, I'll of the just... cult of the dragon Definitely. And then they're, not <laughs> the, then they're not in the first one then they are in the second and they won't Altar, be in the third the, yeah. the rise of Altar cool that's I'm, I'm cool with that that's a business answer I will uh, move <laughs> swiftly on Hmm, who shall we hear <laughs> next? Andy. Go on, I'll let you go second. <clears throat> Alright, here's the truth. Here it comes. Here it is. Alright. Mine is called Raid of Fire Dragon Killers. Uh, and it's Quinn and Jensen head to France, because that's where we left off, to rescue Jared and learn that their fight is far from over. So we open Can with I just Quinn... check. Hang on, hang on, hang on. 
we're only getting one title. Yeah, again, I couldn't think no, of any funny titles come on, today. Mate. I'm, wow. I'm still embarrassed about my Mission Impossible ones. Wow. So, okay, no, that's, <laughs> Next good, week. that's fine. That that should have been a question for the end, but I had to ask it then. <laughs> cool, I'll let you begin. Um, right, so we open with Quint and Jen, uh, Jensen running away from a dragon. The dragon breathes fire and Quinn turns around and sees Jensen just burned to death. She gets all crispy, falls to the floor, she's ash. He runs... Uh, and then the dragon kind of flies, lands in front of him and cooks him to death. Uh, Quinn, end of movie. Quinn then wakes <laughs> up and sees Jensen is making breakfast uh, and talks about how it's been a few months since they saw a dragon. Uh, since then, they fought new crops, started to build uh, more houses and a new community, and everyone's a little bit more happy, and everything seems to be fine. The only problem is they haven't heard from Jared uh, in a couple of months uh, because he went to France at the uh, end, of the, end of the last movie. Uh, the next morning, a French soldier, like nearly, nearly dying, basically, his name's Leo. He walks into camp, falls to the floor and explains um, that Gerard uh, helped him uh, to investigate a problem they were having. But he's been uh, gone over a month and he needs help to bring him back. Um, Quinton and Jensen agreed to help uh, and they head off to France uh, to find this new commune. Um, on the way, they get traced by a dragon or two um, and then uh, they hide and then we get a big chase. Uh, and Leo nearly dies, but then Quinn and Jensen manage to like distract or trick the dragon, basically, uh, and they run to safety. Um, <clears throat> and then the uh, Leo was impressed with their skills, so he introduces them all to his commune and explains that Jared volunteered to go over to another rival commune who had stolen crops and kidnapped some of their women. Uh, so he and uh, Leo and some and uh, like a couple of members of his team um, went over and um, tried to get them back. Uh, they also stole Leo's wife, so he actually has a connection as well. Um, they ran over to the rivals' camp, uh, but they were caught. Leo was the only one who made it out of uh, the team alive, uh, and he, like Jared, shouted from his window or something. He has to go find the dragon killers, um, basically, and then uh, that's why Quinn. Uh, that's why he went to find Quinn and Jensen. Uh, so they're getting to know the commune, getting to know everyone, and suddenly the co commune is overrun by the rival commune, the baddies. Uh, and we meet the fa uh, the main four baddies. There'd be one leader, and I guess like kind of three goons, but they were, they've all kind of like the main baddies. Uh, they overheard their prisoners talking about dragon killers, and they had to come see it for themselves. Uh, Quinn and Jensen then try and reason with them and ask for like a civil trade, but the baddies laugh and a fight breaks out. Uh, the baddies tell their goons to open a cage, and this is where we see a, tra a, tra a chained baby or young dragon comes out and just starts flaming everything, flaming the crops, flaming the houses, flaming the people. Uh, the baddies pull on the dra uh, dragon's chain and makes it and make it walk back into the cage, uh, and then they leave, kind of thinking that they killed everyone. And then we have a psych out. Whoa, Quinn, Jensen, Leo, and a couple of other survivors uh, show that they were hiding, uh, and then they decide to go after they uh, go after the rivals uh, and get their people back. Uh, <clears throat> so they gear up. Uh, Leo says it's going to take a full day uh, to get to the other camp, so we can have a nice montage of them crossing uh, pretty places in France, along with like maybe destructed cities and stuff like that so we can have a nice contrast uh seeing dragons kind of hearing them i want to keep the same tone as the first one so there's not dragons fucking everywhere we can just hear like a roar or something uh and they hide uh at night they camp and quinn and jensen ask leo uh, about the dragons uh and leo can maybe describe how the different they're maybe they're different in from here from like america or something um and then asks if does he know about the male dragon theory leo, leo says he doesn't so quinn explains it and tells him how he, how him, Jen, uh, Jensen, and uh, Van Zam killed one. So we can have a nice little flashback or, or get um, Matthew McConaughey back in it for a little bit. Uh, the next day, they kind of fight, sneak their way into the baddies' camp, uh, and they find a room where they see loads of baby dragon eggs being kept. Uh, in another room, they see the goons trying to like train the dragons, like with shock treatments, like the shock sticks or something, and like treats that they do well. Uh, but it's like it's terrible. All the dragons are crying in, uh, in crying in pain. Uh, the little gang, they find Gerard uh, and free him, and Leo finds his wife and frees all the other prisoners. They try to get, uh, escape, but get caught by the baddies and are thrown into a pit to fight the hungry uh, baby dragons. Uh, as the baddies watch on from above, uh, a baby dragon like runs at Quinn. Quinn dodges, so the baby dragon hits a wall, causing it to crack. Quinn and Jensen see this, use it basically, uh, and use that. The dragons run at them, they dodge, and the crack gets bigger, and so the wall of, uh, eventually starts to crumble. Some of the baddies then panic and fall into the pit. The baby dragons turn on their handlers and start killing them, leaving Quinn and Jensen time to uh, escape and meet the others. 
Uh, they ran outside, uh, and it will be twilight at this time. Uh, they try and flee the camp, but then the goons try and stop them. Uh, before a big fight happens, the baby dragons come out, and maybe the goodies, as they were running out of the camp, they saw the baby eggs hatching or something. So there's more threat. But the baby dragons run, run out, and they start screech. They like, all lift their heads up and start screeching to the sky. Uh, every, everyone like kind of grabs, grabs their ears and goes, "What the hell's going on?" And Jensen says, "They're calling daddy." And then we see a big <laughs> fuck off, massive red male dragon that lands behind the baddies, breathes fire, and then everyone kind of like hides. And then we have a cool, uh, like 5- 10, 15 minute, like stealth fight scene between all the four goodies and four baddies where they're fighting individually, but they're also hiding from the dragon. So it's like a small, it's kind of like a stealth fight, but they also kind of use the dragon. If they see the dragon, they can like try and, you know, if it's flames, they can try and push one of them into the flames. Uh, but eventually, the dragon kills three of the bad guys, leaving just the main one baddie or goon. Um, they run in back inside the rivals' camp and up a large bell tower or steeple or just a big building, basically. Um, uh, the dragon's tail comes down and splits the building in half. Quinn, Jensen, and Leo then run up the stairs to the top of this bell tower, followed by the baddie and Gerard and the others um, uh, are the other side, and they just run out. So they run into the other side of the building. The bad guy up, uh, trips up Leo uh, on the stairs. He pulls out a knife, tries to kill him, but before he does, the male dragon rips off the portion of the roof and starts to climb in. Uh, the Having no other option, the goodies and the baddie jump, basically just down the uh, down the tower, and the red dragon like jumps after them, causing the roof that he just uh, opened uh, that was supporting like either a bell or a pointy statue or a heavy statue to crumble, and that then falls behind the dragon. Uh, at this point, Gerard would have found some like plot armor in the other side of the building, like rope or something that he could have thrown up, use, uh, and then Qu- uh, Quinn, Jensen, and Leo grab it and swing to safety. Uh, but the rope, you know, is uh, is not there, so the baddie can't grab it. Just falls right to the floor, dies. They think they're fine, but then the red dragon hits the floor, starts to open its mouth to breathe fire, but then the bell or the heavy tower or this <laughs> pointy structure fall down on its head and crushes it. Uh, As they get back to Leo's camp, Quinn kind of offers him to come back to America and says, you know, let's build a big commune. But Leo politely declines and says he needs to rebuild here, but then they can have maybe a joke about starting a trade. A trade. Um, Then before they all leave, a Romanian like soldier enters out of breath nearly dead again and explains that he needs help to kill the male dragons leo laughs off and he explains oh we've we've just killed the wait did you say dragons <laughs> the romanian soldier says yes there's three male dragons in europe another three and they all seem to be heading to one location the third film uh-huh. <laughs> mm. <laughs> now at what point are we allowed to destroy the other because you said there's a debate portion and i've there now is. heard two pitches where they have fucking dragons <laughs> and they're like, let's get a human villain. <laughs> <laughs> you will get I, your yeah, chance. I, like, I was saying. Um, you'll get two more pitches. Your yeah, yeah. There's two more pitches to yeah. go. I, 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 I hate to say it, floor. Mikey. I think you might be about to listen to a third one that has the same problem. <laughs> <laughs> Damn it. So uh, that, that was actually my question. And it was a lot more prevalent in this pitch, Andy. Like, what mm. was your decision for making humans such a big antagonistic factor in this movie. because for two reasons if i made the if i made them the dragons again it'd be too similar to the first we need to expand the story and expand the world and see what's going on there two we needed a, an antagonist that was fightable you know for um uh for bale and everyone else like uh there's there's different types of antagonists out there and i was like we can't just have the dragon be this force of nature antagonist because no one from the good guy side can turn and go to this antagonist because it's it's a it's a force of nature basically it doesn't care you can't have like the love interest suddenly you know turn sides and go off with the, the dragon there's no way of connecting the you know the goodies to the dragons so i needed a more uh malevolent villain disney character style uh antagonist where the dragons are like in the first one they're just in the background a bit oh, this this overarching uh uh presence cool um how my other question for now i feel like there's going to be plenty brewing from the other side i'm not going to ask you anymore <laughs> Um, how would you make those scenes when you say about the nicety of going across country where you get urban and then rural times, how do you make that 
suspenseful in 2023 when it's something it's a trope that's been used quite a lot and it wouldn't like, be too how long would to be you fair. add the scene itself would be like four minutes it would just be a couple of nice shots and a couple of shit of some like under hiding under like i don't know a bridge or something and, and seeing a shadow of a dragon go across like okay that's so that, that, that's just to get from point a to okay. point to point b and to have a little bit of a breather it's a montage it's a team american montage yeah montage yeah, yeah. Fucking montage. Team America, fuck yeah uh, cool. I won't ask any more questions. Uh, I'm going to offer you another choice, Mikey. Would you like to go next or would you like to go last? I My pitch is so short. I need to add action scenes, apparently. <laughs> um, but yeah, I no, You go, just have to I say insert, that. you know. Yeah, insert. Here. <laughs> 30 minute chase. Oh, scene. I will. <laughs> That's what Ross does. It works wonderful for yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, did you say you wanted to go next or last? Yeah. I'll the, go. the trick, Mikey, cool. is you say this happens and it's really cool. We've we've all started yeah. doing that, and it seems to it seems to help. I, no spoilers. That would totally work in Hollywood. Too. <laughs> yeah. Walk in. Oh my god! <laughs> Good we believe that. you. We believe you. <laughs> all right, my sequel is called Reign of Terror. Oh, no. set twenty two years after the original film, we find Quinn Abercrombie, the only character worth bringing back. <laughs> I will die on this hill. <laughs> in a state of retirement, the world is built back, but in city sized civilization. So we don't really have countries anymore. We have sort of thriving cities. Um, and we've seen dragons a few times over the last 22 years, uh, but they're not really going after us as much. We kind of make their own food. Uh, they just burn down and eat. So it's, it's, it's great. Uh, we find out that these dragons are cooperating um, and they're, they're starting to attack cities like together as opposed to just sort of bouncing mm -hmm. around and they're doing horrendous damage. The armies of the whole world, which is like the Cincinnati army, the, you know, London army, whatever. <laughs> uh, they go to Quinn to ask if they have any chance of, of building an army to drive these dragons back. What does he know? And this is where it gets great. Um, <laughs> I think the lack of Matthew McConaughey in this movie means nobody ever green lights it. <laughs> you must have, cause like there must Bring be something yeah. there. So I have designed a trio of characters. There, there, there's probably like eight or nine of them in the, in the film. They are professional dragon um, poachers who like, they have a whole black market of just teeth and all that kind of stuff. They are played by Janelle Monet, oh. Steen, <laughs> and, and Lakeith Stanfield. <laughs> and they wow. team up. And, the, and our, our movie is, is the, the dragon poachers building a business out of, out of like going around the world and killing all these dragons versus sort of Queen's oh, man. internal monologue of, this feels wrong. We have made a for-profit <laughs> poaching business. And this is giving me some, some, you know, so, so the true villain is the human it's character. It's capitalism. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it is. Uh, I sort of ran out of steam there. I basically, I just need Janelle and Lakeith in this I movie. Mean, and Steam. Yeah. Good lord. In the dune, in the mm. dune underwear. <laughs> <laughs> with the with the wings. Uh I didn't really figure out how it ended. I'm sure it'll have a big fight, but I was mostly going for premise. That's mm. like I, I, we're 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 stepping onto the war stage and then dipping our toe into war profiteer. <laughs> which, is this, which is this bad. is my kind of pitch. Uh, I will attest, this is how I won last episode, Mikey, by just <laughs> having a premise. Didn't need three acts. These guys... Oh, wait, sit, sorry. Uh, in between each of the acts, there is an action scene or some shit. There we shit. go. There we go. Uh, Insert the action scene. Yeah. There's lots of dragon killing because they're dragon hoarders <laughs> and they're profiteering from... You have to see them killing these dragons, so I, I can see the action there. Oh, see. yeah, I think there's a montage, like, across <laughs> Mexico. 
<laughs> where they're just killing their way from top to bottom. <laughs> they get to like Guatemala. They're like, this is a lot of <laughs> Like an Indiana Jones map. Just going down yeah. down. Yeah. You read yeah. my yeah. fucking mind, Andy. <laughs> <laughs> So I, I guess my question for you first, Mike, is how did we take it over from London to the US for that journey? Um, boat. <laughs> <laughs> here's, here's why. Here's why. In a dragon apocalypse, a boat is the safest way to travel. Mm. Because dragons kind of get ruined by oceans, mm. I find. <laughs> uh, In your experience. Yeah, very true. In, in my experience of <laughs> real life dragons, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. what's his fantasy? Yeah. <laughs> this is real. <laughs> he hit a keyword. He hit a keyword, guys. <laughs> he said the thing. <laughs> I guess my my question for you is just so that we know the kind of mind frame we're working on. What inspired this little journey for Quinn? Where where did your inspiration come from for this? I so there's one sentence written right under Janelle Sting and Lakeith, which I think is why this movie exists. <laughs> they are there to look super hot all the time. <laughs> yeah. Perfect. Uh, yeah. Which is what Matthew McConaughey was around for in the first not wrong. And I'm just sort yeah. of hot people. <laughs> Nailed it. Yeah. Right, I can't argue yeah. with that at all. And you've Got cast it one. for us. I mean, I love it when pitches cast for us because then it saves them. You got to have headache. Sting in there. <laughs> yeah. You can't not have Sting in the Dragon movie. You've already fucked that up once. <laughs> 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 Amazing stuff, Maggie. I'm going to say thank you there and let the other guys think of their questions for you. And we're going to jump over to our fourth pitch, you lucky bastards. Four pitches this episode. Drew Tone B, take it away. Okay, so mine is Rain of Fire colon Phoenix, just because. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> That's uh, not fantasy. So, no, it's mine's, <laughs> mine's like painfully scientific after the <laughs> the all the ribbing that i've had but i've got to stick with it i i was still writing it about two minutes ago so i can't go trying to change it now i've got to stick to my guns okay so it begins with a montage like the first movie where in the first movie it was a montage of the world going to shit and this is a montage of like printing presses starting to spin up again and things are becoming more hopeful quinn with his knowledge of the male dragons and that they figured that out uh, sort of starts going around the world and taking the fight to the rest of the dragons. And over this sort of intervening 20 years, they go around the world, kind of like doing An Andy's movie, but that's it, it. that happens in the first 30 seconds. And they just go around, they give out the secret, they start building communities. Societies are springing up, the world's sort of starting to rebuild. There's communication networks, there's commerce, there's everything's kind of approaching a, a sort of socialist utopia, and it all looks really lovely. Um, we pick up, and Quinn has sort of by default ended up kind of the head of state for New Europe or whatever, whatever the better name for that is that the actual writers can come up with for me. Um, he's in a really boring kind of trade commerce meeting. It's really dull. And he's basically de dedicated his life working alongside Alex and Jared, um, who are now his kind of military commanders. And like finding all of the old people who survived the apocalypse, who have knowledge of agriculture and renewable energy and engineering and, and medicine. And they're like trying to build schools and disseminate this knowledge and rebuild society. Um, uh, I've I've put in here that the Americas, because they're so far away, trade by boat isn't necessarily practical. So we're, we can argue about that in a bit. Um, and so they've got sort of gone isolationist and Africa's doing really well. Um, Europe's a little bit fractious because we can now safely make Russians the villains in everything again. Um, which is which is one benefit of all of this, of everything that's happening in the world right now. Quinn has a bit of a joke that things are almost too quiet. And then somewhere in Russia, because topical, there's an old Russian geneticist. I want it to be Stephen Burkov because I love him. Uh, he's been drafted in to help the shadowy baddies grow new dragons. Uh, I'm, I, I don't want to raise uh, comparisons with Jurassic Park, but they're inevitable. They are, they are 
growing dragons. They're trying to train them to obey human commands. And because they're grown and not spawned, they will have an infinite supply. Uh, and then I've written here, maybe the facility is in Chernobyl just for added effect. And then actually that became quite handy later. Um, so Quinn starts getting reports about belligerents from the Russian Federation. Uh, they're sort of provoking fights. They're taking resources. He starts putting together a diplomatic mission. He says that they put out word, no one is to shoot first, like... We, we can't we we cannot be the aggressors in this situation uh he has some sort of brooding and he's like oh i'm telling people not to defend themselves and he's he's weighing up this choice and say so he never chose to be a leader and he's just falling into it he doesn't know if he's a good leader uh he talks to alex and jared they've both got families there's like there's unresolved chemistry between quinn and alex but he was he was off going around the world and it never happened she's married a a, 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 a dude and has her own kids and he's he's sort of thinking about oh god like i'm in command of soldiers and they might die but then and also what happens to their families and and it's all a big heavy responsibility uh then the russians provoke an attack in germany there's a big military battle as discussed before the episode started recording one of the tanks has garfield on it um there's a joke about it being a monday uh, but then the Russians unleash the dragons. It's utter carnage. Berlin is absolutely ruined. The Russians just roll over them. There are young raptor, raptor dragons, which is super cool and very scary. Um, the news gets to Quinn. The gang have to build uh, support amongst other people and draw up battle plans, war rooms, looking at maps, that kind of stuff. And we see footage of the Russians rolling in with their dragon army. Uh, while they're planning in Paris, there's a sort of dragon... Uh, a stealth attack um, while they're there so we get the the main characters in an action sequence in Paris being blown up and the Eiffel Tower gets melted or and various other things like that um, they get some intelligence about the Russian base they realize that because of the dragon attack on Paris their forces which had massed have been really depleted they've got to split their attack and Bale knows that one of the armies is going to end up being destroyed it's going to be bait and it's just going to be gone um and alex has gone with one army and jared has gone with the other the audience don't know which army is is the bait uh, the armies head off bales agonizing over it and everyone's saying that he's doing the right thing and he's got to stay there and lead and be in command and he's and then he's like no screw this he grabs his band of special forces advisors people that have definitely been set up earlier in the movie because i didn't just add them right there um and he sort of motors off in a in a convoy to to join the fight the battle begins jared's army is the one that bale had to sacrifice jared goes off in a blaze of glory they've drawn all the forces there bale gets there alex's force is drawing the drawing the the main brunt of the defenses quinn and his gang sneak in the rest of the gang will get killed off he finds stephen burkoff he's all guilty and never wanted to do this um and explains we're in chernobyl if we can expose the core everything will be irradiated and this whole problem goes away so quinn's fighting raptor dragons running to the core while alex and the people are desperately fighting to survive he radios alex tells her to pull the forces back has the big emotional goodbye uh and then gets the dragons to incinerate him in front of the core it blows it open everything gets irradiated and in his memory humanity is able to pull together and cooperate a bit better the end he has a terrible husband i just i need you all to understand <laughs> stop making him be with no, alex. no he's not he's <laughs> no, no, no he's there. not with alex that's the point he's not with alex mm. she married someone else he they never got together but wasn't he with her at the beginning she, they, they oh, still no, they still yeah, work yeah, yeah. together but they it never happened right. romantically. The Jurassic Park. 3. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I like that. Especially this is very clever links to a JP. Okay, <laughs> cool. Um, what inspired this take on kind of landing in central mainland Europe as the kind of focus for you? Um, uh, the the message from France was part of it. Um, I, I like one of my all time favorite franchises at the, uh, of recent years is the apes movies. And I like the idea of it going from this smaller scale thing to like full scale war. Um, the sort of obvious current news cycle world events thing of land war in Europe is, is kind of, there's, there's, 
That's so cynical yeah. to look mm-hmm. at the war in Ukraine as a marketing aspect. We, no, Sorry. no, that is cynical for Hollywood marketing. That that <laughs> it is, it's how we play this game, Mikey. We have to try and convince All this right. producer hey. to buy our product. Um, and well, and so I'm looking at the money bags at the end, of it, it was it it, it was it was That's on fair. my mind, and it just it just kind of made sense because. I also wanted to have human baddies in it. Similarly to how Andy explained it, I, I didn't. I, I I wanted people to be the problem. I wanted the people to be the the biggest issue, and the dragons being a force of nature. Yeah. It, it, I think. When do we get a debate? Then? Um, well, yeah, basically very, now. Very shortly. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> my my only other question for it really is just. And where where is that question? I had the question, and I got too excited about the debate face <laughs> because I yeah. could see it bubbling <laughs> away. Um, no, I, I won't. I won't need to. I don't need to ask another question. Um, I'm going to let it all just kind of unravel. I've got a lot to kind of sit back and digest and chew on. Um, but I am just so excited to kind of release the release the hounds, yeah. uh, unleash these dragons, unleash Mikey on the rest of us. Oh my god, yeah. cinders for five <laughs> minutes. <laughs> Um, enjoy. Tell me why yours is the best and why the others should burn. <laughs> oh, Mikey, you start. I, guess. I I dislike not making the the central conflict the dragons. That's horseshit. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's horseshit. Hey, mine's a cult of like, the dragons. Like, they're cool. They're the scariest <laughs> being that has ever lived. But this guy with his magic book. Yeah. That's definitely. Famous, you know what's worse than a dragon, way. though. Yeah, that, man, like man, that, is worse than a I've dragon. I never disputed. Mine oh, was not. Fan- no. I'm leaning into more of this fantasy now in my world. That's, that yeah. is true. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And Andy's I oppose is, that. Yeah, you didn't. You didn't say Jeremy Irons reprising his <laughs> role from the first Dungeons <laughs> yeah. and Dragons movie. Yeah, I know, uh, but I'm I thought, on board. <laughs> <laughs> Look, that was so popular back in when it came out. I thought, why don't I just do a revamped version of that? Yeah. Andy's uh, is... D&D movie mm. so successful, yeah. they made a new one. Now. Exactly. <laughs> Andy's, Andy's has kidnap of women from different tribes. You know, it's 2023. I think it's a bit, a bit yeah, But we've weird. been forced to go back to like prehistoric, te- prehistoric caveman times. That's what the do point. you mean? You guys are and all And they stole in the crops as well. They've taken the dragons. Things. They didn't go back to caveman times when they were in the first one, did they? They were fucking watching him do Star Wars. Yeah, but they didn't, have, like, an, yeah, ooh, they didn't have any human ooh. antagonists in the first one. I think that was the uh, point. Like, in this me. one, it was just, it was just the dragon. You excuse me. Star Wars was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah. And Andy doesn't have So that technically is the best. And Andy doesn't have any bad guy like he's just a uh, gen- generic bad bad people. Doesn't have like a main bad guy or anything. Like I said just... there was yeah, I said there was a main guy. There's four. Also, One's the main and there's like kind of three little goons on the side. Andy, yeah, just... you didn't explain who they uh, were. That's a James went... Bond movie. I have a budget. <laughs> yeah, they, they um, have like French names. But... I didn't want to say four French names. That'd be more that'd be so much effort to say all those and you remember it would, like, be, to say it would be so four. much more disrespectful there's to Pierre. actually research four French <laughs> names and use them. But to <laughs> yeah, say that every yeah. time rather than just four baddies. <laughs> Yeah, Effort. no, you introduced it. In and anyway, it doesn't matter. And then um, Drew's is a fantastic. I would love to play this as a total war game because this is basically what <laughs> all civilization dragons. Yeah, yeah. That is literally what Drew's is. Uh, it's 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 just a strategy game. What, but just just, just a the... strategy game that deals heavily with themes of leadership and the burden of leadership and well, yeah. And okay. there's nothing more hey, exciting on. than fucking boardroom meetings and and, yeah. and I, there's what, one there's not enough there's dragon one in planning dragon hey, 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 That's for me. Yeah. <laughs> on the subject of Drew's movie, do you guys remember that Seth Rogen James Franco movie <laughs> that almost <laughs> made us Korea go to war one. with North oh, Korea? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, the dictator. Uh, oh no, it was so, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. As long as Sony is not the name on this movie, I think you might get away with it. Um, but I think on that alone, I'd be like, no. Yeah. yeah. What happens at the end as well? Then after the after the di- the baby or the dinosaur the dinosaurs the dragons die and it, well the like what happens like with Russia and not like the relationship well, the, into the, the the high the how high do command get, how do they how do they make dragons they using gene- using 
genetics, using genetic engineering that, that they get from the expertise they, of Stephen Burkhoff, who survived right. the dragon apocalypse and, and brought they've got his the expertise into the future. At, at this point. Well, yeah, it's not all, but like, I bet the Russian well, government... It seemed all but fighting in, in, in London. So. There are I, love that that's Andy's, <laughs> I love that that's Andy's thing, is like, well, how did they fucking make them? Yeah, like there's well, it's thousands a big thing of to dead dragons around. Dragons. They could have just taken that's blood why you from didn't a dragon. Have... Hey, if they can clone, yeah, didn't make if a they can clone the, a the sheep, antagonist. someone can clone a fucking dragon. They cloned a sheep in like 1991. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, there were a lot of dragons around. I don't know if they have the right microscopes or anything to uh, <laughs> to make, but that's fine. I mean, my my biggest my biggest problem with Drews is, as as he said, is kind of basically Jurassic World ish. Um, but the, yeah, uh, Ross, I just, I, just I need to, I need to, I need to ask Ross three questions because I fucking love his pitch. One, all the dragons are hive mind. Love it. So when the dragons die at the end, does that kill off the friendly dragon that Bale's just befriended? The friendly yeah, one yeah, already yeah. He died. died. Yeah, okay. He'd already so is died. Bale also, He'd already died. is Bale alive at the end? No, no, he gets swallowed he... into the... It's like, you know, Drax. Right. He gets swallowed into the yeah. stomach. But then he then dies, he, he doesn't come back out. Up. Yeah, yeah. Right, okay. And then and there's what like happens a... to the cult at the end then? Ah, uh, they, they get killed. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. You know, that's for the next movie. <laughs> that's for the prequel it's to lead like, into the next movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, like don't worry about I like that. Ross's. Ross is like six times the budget of the first one. Like, <laughs> yeah, a you cult go... that wasn't in the first one might be in the prequel. I've got in the first Daniel one. Day Lewis no. and Aaron <laughs> Taylor Christ. Johnson. Yeah, and... I forgot about that. And Michael. <laughs> that's why it's Kane. six times the budget. <laughs> Five times Michael, that budget is going I'm to Daniel Day Lewis. <laughs> I'm bringing Michael Caine and uh, what's his face back together again after Batman. You know, are you bringing anyone that's not a white guy? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, Michael yeah. Caine. Yeah. Also, you. Also, I want to know: does 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 Quinn and Jensen have a son, or is Jensen pregnant? No, no. Yeah, well, Jen, at, Jen, at, the beginning, at the beginning, you said she was pregnant, and then you said she had a son. Or do they yeah, just have a son she, and they're pregnant? No, that's, that's generally right. how she these said... things progress, Andy. <laughs> yeah, well, said, no, there was no we... difference between there was no time difference between the opening and <laughs> no, then no, they, uh, she says then... we've got an unborn son. Is what I meant to oh, say. Unborn son. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, unborn okay. son. Okay. That, yeah, they don't have a kid yet, but the kid is going to grow up, and then there'll be another reign of so fire. So it's inner stomach. And they've determined the gender without. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They've got this... the same equipment that, that Russia had in Drew's pitch. It's all right. This oh, is, this is, yeah, okay. This dragon, is the future, dragon, you know. Dragon. They can they can sex a baby <laughs> without a sonogram or anything like that. To, to be you honest, know, it's you a want to rephrase guess, so. any of that sentence you just said. <laughs> 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 to be fair, that fits the rest of Ross's pitch, so I'm kind of okay with it. <laughs> Check. Yeah. Check <laughs> Got right. It. Okay. Yeah, I'm jumping in. I've been I've been reasonably mm. quiet. Okay. So I I I think this is this is genuinely a, a strong collection of four pitches. My arguments against or uh, no, my arguments for first off like Mikey's Mikey's casting of the Dragon Slayers is fucking sick and I want to see mm. that movie like that genuinely. Would be cool. Ross also has an excellent cast. For me, because it does go so far into actual, like, prophecy, fantasy, Michael Caine is a wizened <laughs> librarian wizard. <laughs> That's a step too far for me personally. Hopefully it is for someone else as well. Andy's kind of could be a prequel for mine, although I would question how much of the budget is going to go on de-aging Christian Bale and the other cast members 20 years to fit into the, like, six months after the first movie period. Oh, you put a beard what? on him, he's fine. <laughs> what are the criteria he's a beard, a beard for, at the end. for winning the pitch? Because I can price Yeah, it's whatever Matt likes, basically. Immediately. <laughs> so it's just with I, everyone. I suggested a movie we could make. <laughs> That's, that is fair. <laughs> so that is I fair. feel like that. I, so I like, I like, I like Mikey's uh, Dragon Slayers. The only like pro big thing I've got with Mikey's is you said like they go around the world and Bale has this problem about, oh, I, you know, killing the dragons or selling off their stuff. I don't know if I'm comfortable with that. But a dragon did murder his mum, so I don't know if he would have a big problem with it. He might be like, yeah, fuck the dragons. We don't <laughs> know that the dragon... The, the elevator True, might guess. have killed her. Yeah. It was, it was just after a couple <laughs> years of, like, deep cocaine hot tubs, like, living the life. He's just like... Man, I don't know what Christian Bale is Matthew McConaughey all of a sudden. Ha <laughs> <laughs> ha! Yeah. 
Oh goodness gracious! Yeah. Right, I gotta, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll let you pause and take a breath. I thoroughly enjoyed that, and I would <laughs> love to see that debate just go on and on. To be honest, I feel like that's an extra episode that can release just a continuation of this, just uncensored and unleashed. But I do have to make a choice. So is it, is it going to be Ross's rise of fire with uh, dragon riding cult of Altar? I don't know how many A's are in that name. Uh, the mother of all dragons. It, however, however many A's selfless. you think it is, add three. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can see that working wonderfully on SEO. Um, <laughs> with selfless and probably arguably very unneeded sacrifice, but hey ho. Um, then we've got Andy's Reign of Fire Dragon Killers, which I wrote down as a Euro trip to fight the modern day Vikings and a big red dragon. <laughs> um, <laughs> Mikey's Reign of Terror, which is just the hottest sequel pitch of all with a bunch of dragon slaying hot people. And Drew's that's Reign of That's what the first one was, too. <laughs> well, that's very true, actually. I'll give you that. It's just a continuation in, in a modern yeah. context. I liked how we, a sequel. we did open up to <laughs> diversive <laughs> casting with it as well. <laughs> <laughs> touche touche <laughs> and then of course we've got Drew's Reign of Fire Phoenix where Quinn's now the head of the EU and he's fighting <laughs> Russia and their Dolly the genetically modified dragon so oh well when I, you I put it like that oh. <laughs> right, can I well, can I'm I ask a question <laughs> yes you can <laughs> are any of these like straight to red box kind of <laughs> just like like Jarhead 3, <laughs> yeah. which has nothing to do with Jarhead. No, uh, we're triple budgeting this. Like, this is oh, 200 really? million plus an, easy it's budget. An ideal world. We're, we're every competing with Avatar the here. That, we're competing with Avatar oh. levels of profit that we want to make. We're here. unretiring Danny Gay. <laughs> <Yeah. Davis, so laughs> apparently, we are. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It, it that helps. one's not going to be cheap. Yeah. <laughs> what, we would need why to worry this about. film, Daniel? What, what about Rain of Fire 2? <laughs> really made you want to come back. <laughs> the cult leader, I can yeah. see. Like, that's exactly where He's he not feels even most in at home. The movie. <laughs> <laughs> Just right where he feels most at home in his method world. He's like, I, to- I was told that. <laughs> I was told I could ride uh, a dragon. Cool. <laughs> right, uh, oh. That was funny. Okay, um, here's how it's going to work out. Um, in oh, it feels horrible saying fourth place because it's not even like you get a medal, you get a thanks for turning up sticker. <laughs> um, but in fourth place and taking one point, um, it it has to be Andy, I'm afraid, um, oh. because it didn't grow for me. Like Drew does make a point with the Apes films that. You start small and you've got to get bigger and like kind of see more. And we'd seen people already. Like, I needed more and bigger cinema. So that's why. But it was a great, like, if that was the first film, I'd be more there with it than a sequel film, is what I'm thinking, to be honest. Um, third place with two points. I'm going to go with. Drew, Oof. on the basis of, and I'm fully with it. If if that was a seventy pound game, I'd pay it on day of release. I'd pre-register. You, for you it. wouldn't even it use Game Pass. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't. No, I, I'd, I'd excuse my Game Pass and still buy it because I'd want the I'd want the DLC and the deluxe edition. Um, it is. I think there is. There's definitely a kind of valid point that Mikey makes about. Rush it kind of feels like it sits a little too heavy on that. With like, if that had been, you know, if the war had ended yesterday, then it might be a bit more okay. I don't know how quickly Hollywood waits to jump on these I mean, things. But... Every movie in the eighties, but you know, do me a favor. There was a problem with that. <laughs> look, look up the Oliver Stone movie uh, World Trade Center, and that's how. Long. <laughs> that's how. <long. laughs> <laughs> oh god, I need to even do it. We're g- pause, pause, pitching. Uh, 2006. Okay, so it's five years. Is is a safe, respectable time. So we, we'll bank yours, Drew, okay. and maybe it can be like <laughs> Ry- Reign of Fire Phoenix because it comes back for its third or fourth iteration. I mean, propaganda. Propagand- so long as we don't pick Ross's an- anti-Nazi and movies die. were were a, a cornerstone <laughs> of the fight against Nazism in World Wait, War Two. I actually. But- 
you know. In Drew's defense, <laughs> when did Remember Me come out? Oh, God. Oh, that's 2010? Really? Oh, no, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're a terrible person, Drew. <laughs> you're, just, you're cashing in on death, and it's not yeah, okay. Yeah, right you're now. cashing in during. <laughs> like... <laughs> uh okay so in oh in second place that i i i had to lean into bigger is better for this because i feel like it was it we needed something crazy and this film and this episode of sequel pitch deserves quite an out there pitch so oh do i go with cults or do i just go with hot people killing dragons <laughs> in the day to day <laughs> Oh, I gotta get my, my second movies? place. They still get the three points. Ross, you're taking second Please. place because it's a great film. But there ain't no way that I'm not gonna bat my boy. <laughs> the Hollywood established the legend that is Mikey Newman. You definitely take it's rigged. It. It's rigged. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> well, yeah, cool. yeah, probably one. <laughs> oh, and Matt, Matt's, and he's, he's gone. Yeah. He's gone. <laughs> your mic has gone funny, Matthew. Yeah, I think it's your onboard. I almost said it. It's oh. the sense of the specs. <laughs> well, I, I feel like it's a good time to start wrapping up anyway. And let's say congratulating all four pitches. They were wonderful. But of course, congratulating our guest uh, pitcher and wonderful guest today, Mike Newman. Thank you so much again for joining Woo-hoo-hoo. us. Woo-hoo. Mike Newman, you get the honors as the winner of deciding rat movie we're going to pitch next episode <laughs> and of course the doors are always open for you to come back and <laughs> decide the winning I, sequel so so the question in my brain is how bad do i bully yep. you on this because <laughs> yeah. when you reached out originally i wanted to do <laughs> toys too <laughs> with robin williams <laughs> mm, it it's, okay. it feels only fair you know, I Toys is an incredible film. It's a good movie. You would obviously have to recast. I'm not trying to make a joke there, but like, it's so good. It's so dumb and so strange. <laughs> but let's okay. You're not doing Toys oh. too. Okay. Gone with the Wind. Jesus two. Christ! Yeah. <laughs> oh I love it. Yes, let's do it. Oh my God! <laughs> oh my God! <laughs> And, and like a legacy sequel. Oh, so Gone with the Wind God. on Peacock <laughs> now. <laughs> Gone with the Wind too. <laughs> okay, there you go. Oh, yeah. Jesus. This is going to be one of the rest. We're going to be hounded you the other way. Oh, my God. You never know. God. <laughs> you were involved somehow in this. Um, <laughs> I've done this. <laughs> <laughs> And on that magical musical note, uh, I think there's nothing much left to do. It's like, right, first of all, I'm going to give a market platform to tell everybody where, if for God knows what reason they don't already know where to find you, where could they find you? How could they follow what you're up to? Uh, you can go to youtube.com slash filmjoy, F-I-L-M-J-O-Y, all one word. Uh, to check out our stuff, you can check us out on Nebula if you like paying uh, us money and supporting artists. You can check us out on Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash movies of Mikey, you know, just just wherever uh, commerce happens. <laughs> I, I would say I went to buy I went to buy something from the merch store and we we have we have listeners in the states and canada so you guys buy stuff from the merch store if you're in the uk the um the shipping charges are absolutely bananas so m- maybe just support all the other yeah. ways they have it thank you so much again Where... you've been wonderful <laughs> i'm like should, can we talk about the issues of international <laughs> shipping and our like we're all small businesses. Oh, it wasn't a we criticism. Own... I... <laughs> Sounded like... I just wanted that really cool mug and I couldn't afford it. Yeah. <laughs> you can't... Yeah. Well, we'll do a, we'll do like a trade show or something in England, bring stuff. That'd be fun. As always, you know where to find us on all the different social platforms, including threads, obviously, at <laughs> Sequel Pitch. Uh, we have our page on if you were as part of Make sure that we keep the rights on and buy better microphones. And my cases are probably just destroyed mine. Um, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> this is what we were left in. 
and I think there's nothing more exciting. Uh, so you want to everybody this episode. Andy, thank you for a wonderful pitch. Bye. Drew, as always, thank you for a wonderful pitch. Goodbye, everybody. Ralph Anderson, thank you for a wonderful pitch. I guess that means technically you won as well. Oh, he, oh Ross, you're on one. mute, mate. He was muted yeah. himself because hey. he was saving himself for something special. Yeah. <laughs> oh, sorry, I was just muting myself because I was just playing my bongos. <laughs> playing my bongos with my dragons here. Sorry about that. Mike, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for a wonderful pitch, mate. Yeah, round. Right